Welcome, everybody. This is the Internet Marketing Unleashed podcast and Google Hangout. We're happy to have you joining us. I'm Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Pedology, and I'm very, very excited to be sharing with you some awesome information because one of the issues that podcasters have starting out is one of confidence. Do I sound okay? I don't like the sound of my voice. Uh, can I you know, be charismatic? Are people going to be listening to me? What if they don't like me? All these things. And what it really boils down to is confidence. And when it comes to being a successful podcaster, you need to be confident in your ability to communicate your message to your tribe, to your community, to the people that are tuning in, whether it's for the first time or they've been following you for years and years and years. And I'm very, very excited to bring to you one of the top confident self-esteem experts in the world. He's a certified life coach. He's a professional motivational speaker. He's an entrepreneur, a licensed psychology teacher, and a head basketball coach for USA Basketball. His main areas of expertise are teaching, coaching, public speaking, personal development, personal transformation, the human mind, maximizing human potential, motivation, and goal setting. He has a bachelor's degree from Coe College in Cedar Rapids, and he has a four-year varsity letter winning college, well, he is a four-year varsity letter winning college athlete in men's basketball. And he's also, as I said, a coach for USA Basketball. What's really exciting for me is he's got 115,000 students in his Udemy courses, and he teaches with passion and purpose. And I love his courses. I love taking the courses. I always learn lots. And one of the things that I really enjoy is he's willing to take risks. And I've seen him recording on a beach somewhere, uh, hiking up a mountain somewhere in Arizona. Uh, everywhere he goes, he steps out of his comfort zone. And if you're going to be a podcaster, that's one of the things that you're definitely going to be doing. You're going to be putting yourself out there. Some people are going to be agreeing. Some people are going to be disagreeing. And, uh, you know, there's always the haters uh, or the trolls that are just, just want you to go back into your little hole and be quiet. And, of course, as podcasters, the last thing we can do is be quiet. So welcome, Joe Paris. How are you doing today? Doing wonderful, Scott. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, that was quite an introduction. Really appreciate that. And uh, just being on the show, really excited for this and uh, can't wait to get started. Awesome. Well, I've halfway through your newest course, which uh, <laughs> the name of it escapes me, the Complete Confidence and Self-Esteem Master Class. And I made a couple notes of things that I just wanted to kind of touch on. And what I'd like to do is I want to challenge you a little bit, Joe, I'll get you a little bit out of your, uh, maybe out of your comfort zone, which I know you're used to, uh, <laughs> and tie most of what we are going to be talking about to podcasters specifically. And of course, if it applies to a podcaster, if you're on YouTube or if you're doing Facebook Live or Periscope or recording stuff for audio books, I, it's all going to apply. But I kind of like talking to the podcasters because that's, uh, that's where my group sort of hangs out sure and so the first thing that note i noticed in your course was you talked a lot about the importance of goals and i wanted to to really start there but why are the goals important and um maybe you know how you use that to build confidence yes yeah, an excellent question goals are extremely important not only for confidence but really for anything in life what goals really do and what it's done for me and everyone that really sets them is it gives you a focus point. It gives you something to shoot for and it gives you just clarity and focus. With everything going on, crazy media, you know, social media, friends, family, in general, there's just we're bombarded now with so much information that's really hard to kind of like cut through all that and be clear about what we really want. You can pick almost anything that you want to do in your life when it comes to your career and your job. I know that people change jobs four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen times. And, and that's uh, just in a year. Yeah, and that's just in a year, exactly. <laughs> so what goals really do is they give you that focus, that clarity. And I have created multiple goal setting courses. But I think for myself, what it really does is it says, all right, here's what I'm going to be focusing on. Here's what I'm going for. And I'm not going to stop until I get it. And I think that that's really important 
in life. And it's also really important for your confidence because there's a lot of times where things don't go the way that we want them to. There's a lot of times where we get shut down, where people make fun of us, where we don't get the job that we want to. And we have to be able to bounce back. And if we have a goal that's so strong and it's so clear that it really helps cut through all that nonsense and it really helps us get through and get you know, past those tough times. So I think that's why uh, I'm really huge into goals. And in the beginning of our course, I have uh, the students set a goal because it's, I really truly believe if you don't have a goal coming to this course, then you're just going to be watching the videos and then you'll move on to something else. And who knows how much you'll really get out of the course and the teaching. So I think it's really important that the students right away have a goal so that when they're even watching the videos, they're like, wow, they're, they're really watching it with intent. They're watching it with, you know, this, like I said, intent. And also there's a reason, there's a reason why they're watching it and they're going to be able to get much more out of the videos that way right. as well. I have a slightly different take on goals that I've noticed in my life uh, that I'd like to share with you. And that is, uh, I really think that hmm, you can call it God, you can call it the universe, like however you want to say it, when there are things that get attracted to us. And yes. I know what I've noticed is if I have a clear goal, then I notice the opportunities that come by that will help me achieve that goal. Whereas if I'm not so let's say, for example, I want to go to San Francisco and then I'll notice, oh, there's a sale on, you know, on a flight to San Francisco or a friend of mine says, you know what? I love driving down the coast. I'm going to be driving down. You want to come with me, Scott? But if I don't, and so it's like all of a sudden, all these ways open up that I can go to San Francisco. Yeah. And if I don't have a goal of going to San Francisco, then I don't pay attention to any of those things. And it's just like, well, I never go anywhere. And of course, there's all these opportunities for me to go all over the place and I'm not missing it. I'm missing it because I haven't sort of set that goal. I haven't told my subconscious, you know, this is important. Watch out for opportunities to come by because I think it's like we're on this busy highway and every car flowing by is this opportunity for us to do something. And the trick is to figure out, well, that's going to get me in, you know, towards my goal and right. that's not going to. And then. And then you just sort of do this sorting thing and all of a sudden it's like, wow, like here are opportunities for me to do all these things that I want to do because I've actually set the goal. And I've noticed when I'm in a, when I just noticed that when I actually set this goal, I'm going to do this all of a sudden, like I set a goal of, you know, losing a little bit of weight, getting a little bit fitter. And a friend of mine on Facebook who is a fitness coach had the same problem. He says, I had a back problem. I had a sore back, couldn't exercise. I got a little bit fat. My goal for the next month is to lose seven pounds and do this and this and this. And he posted it on Facebook. And I thought, huh. So my comment was my goal for July is lose six pounds, work out four times a week, uh, you know, hike, you know, two hours, you know, three times a week, go to hot yoga four times a week. And I just put it there. So now all of a sudden, we're keeping each other accountable on it. Yeah. If I hadn't been thinking, you know, I, I really want to get a little bit fitter. I want to get a little bit stronger. I, I have this goal. Then I probably would have just seen his post. And, oh, that's cool for him, you know. And off I went, not paying any attention. And then adding another five pounds this month instead of losing the five pounds that I want to lose. <laughs> Yes, it's, it always seems to be easier to add on the weight than to, to lose it. But, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. But, yeah, keep us updated on your goal. That's an awesome goal to have. Uh, so one of the things that you talk about in the course is sex, success. Oh, sex breeds sex. No, success <laughs> breeds success. So I want you to expand on that a little bit. Absolutely. I look at my life when I kind of do my videos kind of as experiences and I kind of like to talk about some of the things that I've had firsthand experience with and the success breeding success basically comes from baby stepping and really being able to see just a little bit of success that's going to encourage you to keep trying. And I know for myself, there's been times where I don't see success anywhere and it can be a real struggle, but I have in the back of my mind, okay, as long as I kind of just took action, as long as I'm moving towards my goal, going back to goals, moving towards something that I really, really want, that in itself is a success. And if you can kind of just trick your mind to figure out and to look at all of the different things that are going really well, all the different things that you are succeeding at and that you are really 
getting a, just a little bit of success, that's going to pay off and really have you have this massive success all the way at the end. And I think that that's really, really important. I know that using a sports analogy, whenever a team is doing really well and this, you know, they're, they have the momentum and all this success, well, it just seems to breed even more and more success. They just have like winning streaks. They go on like 10, 11, 12 game winning streaks and they feel kind of untouchable. Well, how does that happen? Well, it's because they have this reference experience from their last like three or four games that they just, you know, knocked the ball out of the park or just, you know, stomped on the other teams. And so they go into the next game at ease. There's no pressure on them. It's just like, oh, you know, we've won three in a row. It's awesome. But uh, we're just doing our thing. We're playing really well. And we're just we expect to win. They kind of expect to win because they've seen those little successes add up over time. So that's kind of what I talk about a little bit with the success breeding success. And it's very important to understand this principle because if you're not if you're looking at all the negative and trust me there's a lot of negative out there and you're not looking at these little successes and these little reference points that are pointing you in the right direction you can get sidetracked very quickly and it can really destroy your confidence and self-esteem yeah i totally agree and i i can't i tend to look at life as waves on the ocean you know you have the highs you have the lows and uh, i remember asking the first good friend of mine who ever got married, what the difference between being single and being married was. And he said, Scott, the highs aren't so high and the lows aren't so low. I'm far more stable. Sure. And I thought that was kind of interesting. And and I think it's important that people look at their lives and say, you know, I'm going to have highs, I'm going to have lows. It's part of the nature of being a human being, as far as I can tell. And you just have to look at the news to see, wow, this singer is number one and their life is great. And then a week later, they're a drug addict and they've crashed and they're bankrupt sort of thing. I mean, er those are extremes, but they happen all the time. And you don't have to look far to see it, whether it's a movie star or a sports athlete, you know, the number one draft pick. And the next thing you know, he's a bum off on the street. You know, it's just it's sad how that happens. And yeah. but I think if you're aware of it, then you can say, OK, this is a time when I'm really high and this is a time when I'm really low. And when you talk about success breeds success, it reminds me of a time when I was really low. I'd just gotten divorced. I didn't know what was going to happen with my life. Everything had collapsed. And my self-esteem was at a, a very low point. And all I thought was, how, how can I get out of this? Like, how can I turn it around? Because I'm in this downward spiral. And I thought, well, I'm just going to make a goal that's really easy to do because everything is really hard for me to do right now. Sure. And, and I'm just going to achieve that goal. What, and I have no clue what it was at this, you know, was, this is 15 years ago. And, uh, and then, then this, but I achieved it. And then, okay, great. Congratulations. Now, now we're going to do another goal. And it's just something that I just a little goal. And I just kept making these little goals and achieving them. And then it's like, nobody starts bench pressing 500 pounds, right? Like if you're me, if you start at 20 pounds and see how that goes, and then you build up to 50 and 100 and, and away you go. And I look at goal setting sometimes as the same way. A lot of times people talk about the, the hairy audacious goal or whatever, and I think that's important. But I also think it's important to have these little successes that build into bigger successes and build into bigger and bigger and bigger successes. And uh, to me, that point in my life will always be a major turning point. It was just like, I'm going to walk around the block, you know, <laughs> and yes, I did it. Great. You know, now I'm going to do it two times or I'm going to read a chapter in Think and Grow Rich or it doesn't matter what the goal is. It's just the achievement of the goal and the discipline of doing that. Exactly. And you bring up some really good points there. I think in our brains even i don't know if there's a whole lot of research with this but i think there is a little bit like when we achieve something and when we see some sort of success our brains kind of light up and uh, we definitely have these endorphin rushes and we feel better about ourselves so i think you you've obviously made some really really good points there i really like the the bench pressing analogy uh starting at 20 pounds i like that i got it got it <laughs> and uh some really good stuff there so yeah i think we definitely hammered home on that point of the success breeding success and uh it's really, really good to talk about. Well, another thing that you talked about in the course that I wanted to touch on was uh, so it had to do with 10,000 hours. So for those of us that don't, you know, who are watching have never heard about this 10,000 hour thing, maybe you can just give a quick recap of it and how that applies to increasing our confidence and, and self-esteem. 
Absolutely. This actually came from a book that I read by Malcolm Gladwell, and he discusses the 10,000 hour rule way more in depth. He talks about how basically I'm just going to do the little short end version here for everyone. Sure. If you take 10,000 hours and you do like one task or you do one thing, what happens is you mastered it. He makes the argument that it's mastered. And so what you want to do with your confidence is build all these different reference points and experiences over time. And if you were to build up to 10,000 hours of these different references where you're building and working on your confidence, it's going to be very difficult for you to not feel confident in almost any situation. And I think that is a tremendous goal. It's something that I'm definitely working towards myself. I've created numerous courses now on confidence and self-esteem. It's been a lifelong journey for me and it will continue to be a lifelong journey. But to reach the point of mastery, you have to put in the time. I think that's kind of the, the message that I'm trying to send my students is if you're just going to watch a few videos and then think that, oh, now you're the most confident rock and roll person in the world, then yeah, it's going to take a little bit more than that um, for you to really be able to gain a lot of confidence and self-esteem to the point where literally it's life-changing. And that's what I want for my students is for them to have a life-changing experience in my course. And I've created, this was about a year ago, a really big course on confidence and self-esteem. And a few of my students, multiple of them have had this transformation. And I thought to myself, well, I just want to make this even better. I want to create new videos, update it, make them really, really well done, give some new insights and just kind of share, just continue to keep sharing. But the 10,000 hour rule is powerful. Um, there's some debate upon, you know, there's, there's always people that are going to say it doesn't work. It does work, blah, blah, blah. So I, I, I just want the, the message to be kind of clear that the more time, energy and effort that you spend, on yourself, building yourself, building your confidence and self-esteem through different exercises. And I go through many different exercises that you can do in the course. It's only going to help you and your confidence and self-esteem in the long run. So hopefully that helps uh, with the 10,000 hour rule kind of question there. Well, one of the things I'm doing is learning to salsa dance. And I can tell you that if I had had 10,000 hours of salsa dance practicing, I would be very, very good at it. Sure. <laughs> You, and, you'd, be, you'd be really, really good and a complete expert, I'm sure. Well, if you think about it, if you put that much time into one thing, how can you not be, you know, the world's best at it almost, right? Sure. I, exactly. I, I, what I liked a bit about what Max uh, Gladwell said was 10,000 hours will get you mastery. And then if you have talent on top of it, like Fred Astaire, then you get to that level of, of, of mastery and, and he says but whether you're at Fred Astaire's level or you're at the 10,000 with no talent like I would be <laughs> you would still be a very good dancer right yes or very good at whatever it is you're doing and there was a fellow that I I watched a, about a year ago who had the opposite side of the 10,000 hour thing which I thought was really interesting and he says, you know, 10,000 hours can be very intimidating because that's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. But he says, how long does it take you to get competent as opposed to a mastery of it? And he said 20 hours, which I thought was really interesting because uh, I'm taking salsa lessons. And I was thinking 10,000 hours of salsa lessons, like I'm going to be 120 by the time i am done that. And I just want to be good at it. I don't want to be a master at it, right? And I noticed, so I was paying attention, and I noticed after about 20 hours of classes and practice, I was not incompetent. Like I was very, I'm a very bad dancer. My rhythm is not the salsa rhythm. I'm Celtic, so I can dance Celtic songs in my sleep. But to, to do that eight beat with the pauses and everything else was so foreign to me, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to do it because this was really a challenge for me to learn and frustrating because I had no, I had no rhythm. Right. And so after about 20 hours, it was like, wow, I'm, I'm not embarrassing on the dance floor. Anymore. <laughs> I want to get way better than the 20 hours. I want to be cl closer to the 10,000. But you know, this again is that success breeds success, right? After 20 yeah. hours, it was like, wow, like I'm not embarrassing myself anymore or the people I'm dancing with. And so 
we get, you know, so it's interesting how it all ties together. You can go for the mastery, but you can also go for the competency and you need the competency. You're always going to do 20 hours before you do 10,000 hours, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's really interesting that you even bring that up. I kind of have touched on that in an accelerated learning course of mine. And one of the leaders, I think his name is Josh Kaufman in one of his books, uh, discusses the, the 20 hours and it's a great book. Um, since I'm, I don't remember the name of it, uh, the author is Josh Kaufman and he talks about the, uh, the 20 hours to kind of competency and accelerated learning. Basically, you know, if you want to learn something new, it takes you about 20 hours to learn it. That's it. And I think for a lot of people, why this is so powerful is the fact that we can, we can squeeze 20 hours in. It might take us a month. It might take us two months, but 20 hours is like, okay, it's less than a day. So I can find a way a half hour here, half hour there to, to do what I need to do. And yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool that you can have that experience and you're like, oh, I learned something new. You feel good about yourself. And uh, maybe that's something I add to the course. Didn't think of it that way. So <laughs> giving me some inspiration. I appreciate that. Cool. Uh, and you reminded me, uh, it was about, well, it was 15 years ago. I was learning copywriting. And at the same time that I started taking this course, and the course was basically, I don't know if it was six months, a year, two year course. And every month they would send me a booklet to read and an exercise to do. And on, on my desk, it was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Like I just had no time for it. And at the same time, I had taken a new position at the Internet Marketing Center and I was learning their copywriting. So, I mean, I knew no copywriting. I realized that I needed to learn it. So I started taking a course and then I got a position at a company where copywriting was crucial and I had to learn their copywriting as well. So I was in this massive copywriting learning stage and frustrated because I had spent 300 bucks on this course. I wanted to take the course and I just wasn't doing it. And so I asked myself the question, well, what could I do, right? And I thought, well, I could take it, put it on my night table, and then I could read 15 minutes before I go to bed. I could make that commitment, right? And I was shocked at how quickly the pile went down and I was up to date. And I hadn't done the exercises, because I was reading just, I was, my goal was just to read it through first. Sure. And, and, it, and, you know, so over time, doing a little bit makes a huge difference. It does. Yeah, it absolutely does. So one of the things that we haven't talked about, uh, I'd like to touch on is self-esteem. And why is that so important to success? Self-esteem really, it, it's kind of this overarching thing for everything that we kind of do in life. It's kind of how worthy we feel as humans in different situations. And, you know, I look at success in general, and a lot of people, they're afraid to step outside of their comfort zones because they don't feel entitled or worthy to whatever it is they're trying to inspire towards. So a great example with this is, uh, I even do this in my course, is I was climbing a mountain. And you have to have a certain amount of well confidence as well, but self-esteem to feel worthy that you can actually make it all the way to the top of the mountain. Some people feel like, oh my gosh, if I make it to the top of the mountain, like, will people look at me weird? Like, will, will there be some sort of judgment there? Or like, do I feel like, you know, good enough to be somebody that can achieve something of this magnitude? And so that's where your self-esteem really comes in is feeling worthy and feeling entitled to really what it is that you really want. And a lot of people, they will say, well, of course, I feel worthy to be a millionaire. Of course, I feel entitled to driving a nice car. But then you look at their actions and you look at their behavior and they really are scared to death of it. They are scared to take risks, as, you've, uh, as we've talked about a little bit. They're scared to step outside of their comfort zone. And so in order to really be successful, you have to have a... Again, success is kind of this, you know, linear kind of thing where it's like, you know, a little success for somebody is not a lot of success for somebody else. But again, it is right. what it is. So, um, you know, in order to kind of gain any sort of type of success, you have to feel worthy of it and you have to feel good about it. So uh, I talk about different ways to start feeling worthy and some different strategies. And a lot of these are actually more mental than they are the physical end of it. And I think that that's really important to note as well is, you know, there's, 
a lot of the stuff is, is, is really in your mind and you have to really be able to have an open mind to learning, have an open mind to some of these different strategies and trying new things because that's where a lot of this is at. And once we take things from the inside in your mind, you start to internalize these things. We can then force them out to the outside. And that's where, you know, you see a mountain, you climb the mountain, you feel really good about it. And uh, you go from there and you can use the mountain analogy for uh, any sort of success in life as well. Well, I have to tell you my mountain story since you brought up mountains. Please, please do. Uh, on the other side of the water from where I live is this huge mountain called Mount Seymour. And a buddy of mine and I said, okay, we're going to go to second peak on Mount Seymour. From there, you can see north of Vancouver. And you can just see like a thousand snow-capped mountains. It's just absolutely amazing. And unfortunately, the day that we selected to go, it was raining and dreary. And if you've ever been on the West Coast in either Portland or Washington or BC, you know how miserable that can be. And the mist, like it wasn't raining, it was misty, which means that you're walking through a wall of water. It's just little droplets that are they're too small to fall, right? And so after about two, two and a half hours of this, you can just imagine how miserable we were. And we, so we're trudging and trudging and trudging and we're wet and we're damp and it's gray and you can hardly see anything because we're right in the clouds. And finally, we make it to Second Peak. And, you know, you just up those last three steps were there. And I just let out this huge yell because we had seen, and we had seen nobody for three hours. And I just like, let it go. Yes, we did it. And then two minutes later, this black dog comes up to second peak. And then five minutes later, this woman comes up to second peak. And I'm like, oh my God, I made this big noise in the mountains and there's somebody who actually heard it, right? And so I turned to her and I apologized. And I said, yeah, I'm really sorry if you know, my yelling startled you or scared you or whatever. And she said, no. She says, I was trudging through this miserable weather and I was ready to turn around and go back down. And I heard your yell of joy and triumph from Second Peak. And I said, he's there, I'm going. Yeah. And I just thought, you know, we inspire people with no actual idea that we're inspiring people when we do stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's an awesome story. And, you know, you made her, she was thinking, secondly, to kind of go back down the mountain. She didn't feel entitled or worthy to, to go all the way up there. You know, who am I? It's just me. I'm all alone. And we can have this negative kind of, yeah, this negative kind of self-talk. And just by hearing somebody else, it kind of inspired her to, you know, shot a little self-esteem. And uh, she was able to uh, make her way up the mountain and uh, meet you there. So that's an awesome story. So one of the things that you talk about in the course is inner confidence versus outer confidence. And I just wondered if you could give us kind of a little bit of a, a sneak peek into, you know, what do you mean by that? So inner confidence is, again, more of those mental mindsets. And a lot of these are having like an abundance mindset, having a mindset where you're just more open, you're honest. Um, let's talk about the abundance one, because I think this is a really good one to have to build your confidence and self-esteem. If you truly believe that there's an abundance of anything and everything in life, that there's never a shortage, um, no matter what happens, there's just more than enough for everyone to go around. You're going to start to, like you said, see more of that in your everyday life. And so when it comes to your confidence and you go, okay, well, you look at other people, maybe they're more confident than you are. And you can guys kind of see that in the way that they behave. Or you can say to yourself, oh, well, there's only certain people that can be confident. There's not enough confidence to go around for everyone. That's more of a scarcity mindset. We definitely want to stay away from having a scarce mindset of there's not enough resources and things to go around. But if you, you know, flip it around and you go, well, you know what, if, it's, if they can do it, so can I. There's more than enough to go around for everyone. I can be confident. Then you're going to start building your confidence right then and there in that moment because that's kind of the belief that you have. You have the belief that there's more than enough, that everyone can be confident, and we can all really feel good and just kind of keep moving forward. I think that's an awesome, that's kind of a more inner inner mindset, inner confidence belief. I think a lot of these beliefs, and I talk about many more of them in the course, are really, really the foundation of confidence and self-esteem. Because then when you go to the outside, outer confidence, 
And what does that look like? Well, I actually go into some body language techniques to actually demonstrate and show that you are confident. And when you get, when you actually just feel really at ease with yourself through these beliefs and through all the internal stuff, it'll start to manifest on the outside. So you'll just feel at ease. You'll lay back. You'll uh, kind of just, you know, if you'll be talking to a friend or if you'll be talking to a complete stranger, this is even a better example. If you're talking to a complete stranger, you'll probably just talk to the stranger in a way that you talk to an old friend. You just be so at ease with the situation because you've internalized that, you know what, if the stranger doesn't like me, then they don't like me. There's, there's more, there's, you know, 7 billion people in the world. Not everyone's going to like me. I'm okay with that. That's I've right. internalized, you know, some of these, these beliefs that, you know, there's more than enough to go around. There's more than enough people. And uh, so I give some specifics on strategy vocal tonality, how to use your eyes, how to use your hands, how to position yourself. And so this is very helpful for outer confidence because I think it's things that sometimes we don't think about our body language. You know, if we're talking to somebody new or if we're talking to our boss, you know, we're slouching or if we're like all over the place or we, we you know, don't show them proper eye contact, then yes, I mean, that definitely demonstrates right away how confident you are. But if you were to give them eye contact, talk about, you know, really deep in your voice and really, you know, have this guy, I, I use a rock star stance where you're just kind of really standing up tall. Boom. There you are. The, the, you don't even, it doesn't even matter what you say. Sometimes the person can feel yeah. like, Whoa, that's right. Okay. This is a, this person means business. So hopefully that kind of helps answer that, that question all in one. Um, yeah. That was a really good question as well, though. Thank you. Thank you. I feel so confident. I've had successful questions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want one more question. And then after that, what I'd like to do, if, if you don't mind, is have you show us, just go a th quick walkthrough of the course. We can look at sort of the curriculum. You can maybe do a quick commentary of that and sure. go up here and click on the little card or look in the description below. There's a link to the course. So we've been talking about the complete confidence and self-esteem masterclass uh, by Joe Paris. And uh, so, Joe, we've talked about inner and outer confidence, and then you talk about and teach about um, situational confidence. So what is situational confidence? Great question. Another really good question. So in life, we're always in different situations. So there's, there's never really the same situation twice. Now, there are very similar situations, and this is where we feel at home. So example. Uh, situational confidence is where like if you were to come home every day, well, you feel really comfortable in your own house. Why? Because, well, you live there. You spend a lot of time there and it's just very easy to turn the TV on, kick up your feet. It's maybe just you, the cat and the dog, the wife, the, the kids, whatever. People that you've spent a lot of time with. So you feel very comfortable in that specific situation. Now, if you were to go out, let's say, and travel halfway across the world to China or something, you don't speak the language, uh, you've never been there before, and you're trying to get a hotel, you're trying to get food you've never eaten before, it's a completely different situation. And so naturally, we're not going to have as much confidence as we were back at home. And that's because of the little different reference experiences, as we've discussed a little bit here, and also because, well, it's just, it's foreign to us, well, literally. So I talk about how to feel more comfortable in these different situations and how to get outside the little, you know, our little comfort zone box that we live in. And the more that we stretch and grow and go to different places and travel and meet new people, the more our situational confidence, we, the more we gain the ability to want to keep stepping outside, to want to keep traveling, meeting new people. And we feel comfortable with this. Uh, I was just in San Francisco at the Udemy Live event, not last weekend, but the weekend before. And you know, I booked it all myself uh, from the airplane, the airport. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's about time, right? But uh, I, it's, I've never been to San Francisco before. I had no idea how to get to uh, where I needed to get to for sure. But I had enough situational confidence experience from traveling before that I felt very comfortable in going, all right, you're gonna go by yourself. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're a grown man and uh, you've traveled to so many other different foreign places before. This is going to be a breeze. So I felt comfortable doing that already because I'd built up all these different situational confidence experiences prior to that one. So uh, it's a great, uh, I talk about, you know, some more 
insights and some different strategies on how to build your own situational confidence. But that's kind of the gist. Yeah. And, uh, I think it's very important to, to have this and to understand this as well. It, it really is. And before I started doing all the things I'm doing now, I spent 20 years as a grocery store manager at different stores around British Columbia and Western Canada. And one of the things that we would do is we would hire new employees. And there was one time where I had a goal of hiring like 16 new employees. And so we had, and then most of them are young, they're high school students or uh, college students. It was part-time jobs. And one, I'll never forget this. Like we had this room full of like 25 young people and most of them were all talking and excited. And, you know, some of them were a bit nervous and we would go through a bit of a process. Like the human resources people came up and they ran it. I was just there watching. And, there was one young Chinese gal, you know, she was about 18, 19, and she was so quiet. Like she answered everything with like one, one word answers. And, you know, and so we didn't hire her. Like we needed someone that would, we knew could interact with our customers in, sure. in a pleasant way. And we weren't seeing any of that from her. And so her mom called me up a couple of days later and said, why didn't you hire my daughter? And I explained what I just said. And she says, oh, around here, she's yelling and boisterous and dancing. And I said, yeah, she's at home. She's comfortable. When she's not at home, she's not acting that way. And, and I told her, like, if you can help her to get some of that out in public, the next time we hire, we'd love to hire her. I mean, she was obviously going to be a hard worker. She comes from a good family. I mean, there was lots of positives. Unfortunately, the interaction, which was the number one criteria, wasn't there. So she had situational confidence. When she was at home with her family, she could be loud and boisterous and talking and everything else. When she was out in public among 25 strangers, then she just went into her shell. Yeah, and this is this reminds me of one last little thing here. It's kind of a fun little analogy, um, but you make an excellent point. It's like those people who play those video games online a lot, and if anybody plays those video games online a lot, uh, I used to be one of them. So we can all we can put me in this category as well. You put the headset on, and you're you know got your uh, little cast going, and you got everybody just sitting there, just you know listening to you, and you're just like having a great time with all your friends in front of, and you're just in your own little world. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, you go to school or you go to your job and like you, those people don't talk to anybody. But then when they get home and they're in front of their video game, they're just like loud, 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 crazy. And that's what, you know, it's, this is why situational confidence is very, very important. I mean, it was the difference between that young lady getting a job and not getting a job because she couldn't, she didn't have the confidence in that different situation. And, you know, in order to really build that, you have to put yourself in a lot of different situations so that when you get into a different situation, you, it doesn't feel that foreign because it's just like, oh, I've already been in a situation where it is this foreign. It feels this weird, but I've done it so many times that just another one of those situations. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a great story. And just reminded me of the whole uh, kind of little video game analogy there. Cool. All right. So, Joe, why don't you uh, share your screen and yes. let's bring up the course and, and kind of just do a high level sort of review of the course. Absolutely. I'm going to share my screen right now. Hopefully I got that. There we go. And uh, here's the course right now. It just launched about a week ago. Um, we already got 2,000 students in there and three really positive ratings. Um, something to note, and I'll just kind of share the promotional video here a little bit. Um, I did a lot on just making this a very high quality course in terms of the videos themselves. I use a green screen. Um, I use a very high quality camera. The, the videos are in 720p and higher. So um, I really wanted this to be a high quality video course. And I use professional microphones. I use uh, I'm normally suited up and nice uh, apparel. So just wanted to kind of show you an example of that. And I use video blocks. Um, just it took me a long time to do this yeah. but it was worth it um it was really worth it the course has 72 different lectures okay um, hey, over so i want to interrupt you for a second sure no problem because most people who do video courses stand well they just basically stand somewhere in front of like a white background or a green background or something that's in their home uh, they don't put any real thought into it and I'm talking for like the vast majority of people that do talking head type 
uh, courses like yours. And one of the things that I love about your course is, yeah, like there you are up on a hill with an interesting background. Like you're you're doing the course in a way that's really interesting and and br brought me into the course a lot, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to share this course with everybody was I just thought, you know, when you do the green screens and you're taking the time to put an interesting background behind you, I mean, that's a lot of work. And I really appreciated it because most people, myself included, we just have some little background and we just sort of use that. We don't spend a lot of time making the course visually interesting from a perspective of more than just there's my face. And I just wanted to, you know, congratulate you for doing all that work and for taking the time to make the course so visually interesting. And I really do appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and sorry to, to get ahead of you there a little bit, but I, I kind of felt like what you were talking about is what your I timing was perfect. Good timing. Um, but yeah, here I was in, uh, I, I do a lot of traveling. Um, I've committed to teaching online full time and I'm very blessed and thankful to be able to do this full time. And I love to travel. So with that kind of freedom, I can travel. Um, I was in Arizona here and I was like, well, I don't know the next time I'm going to be in Arizona is. So I'm going to shoot as many of these videos as I can. And uh, definitely got a few of those in the course. There's some other videos where I'm in California, like walking on the beach. Those are some more like uh, bonus videos in this course. But yeah, I mean, I definitely, as a student, somebody who takes online video courses myself, there's something to be said for having that visual backdrop to have the instructor be somewhere that has traveled somewhere and go, wow, that's really cool. That's inspiring me to maybe travel, to, to do these things. If this person can do this, you know, why can't I? And I definitely wanted to demonstrate that as well. If I'm going to be an expert in my course, um, I better be not only talking the talk, but walking the walk as well. So right. I feel that like that's very important. It gives the students a sort of credible source as well. If I say that, you know, oh, I travel a lot and then you don't ever see me out traveling, then it's just not very credible. And it just, you can lose the engagement of the students as yeah. well. And that's, you know, that's one of the, one of the reasons why I think you're like my brother from another mother or however the people put that, uh, <laughs> because in my power podcasting course, podcast made easy, what I, all the introductions are me in Peru at Machu Picchu. And I just thought, what a great way to introduce the topics, but then to have <clears throat> an absolutely incredible background. So when I see you doing it, it's just like, yes, someone who thinks the same way as me. So nice. Absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely um, a very, it's a bit more engaging than, you know, perhaps a PowerPoint slide or maybe just mm -hmm. a blank screen. And um, I'll let the... Uh, listeners kind of explore this course on their own to kind of see more of the benefits, but I can go through kind of the curriculum here and kind of go and break down a little bit about what is all in this course. I think that may be helpful for them. Yeah. Um, so we kind of just start off with a, a simple introduction. And in this course, I really wanted to get students working with confidence and self-esteem right away. So it's just a one introduction, two minutes, boom. Okay. You, 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 there doesn't need to be a whole lot more said for that. Then I kind of go and I talk as extensively about the course itself, what they're going to get, all the benefits, what the lectures are. So that takes, you know, five minutes, but I think that's important to kind of lay that foundation out because if you don't know how to use the course, then you can be kind of just flying through the videos and not be getting anything out of it. So I did take a little bit of time there making a committed decision. Uh, that's kind of where I talk about setting a goal and really what is your committed decision to this course and what are you trying to really get out of it? And then I kind of show, and I, uh, I have a goal that I posted in my own course here, show my own example. And then we dive right into it. What is confidence? And I really wanted to, like I said, get people started working with confidence and self-esteem right away. So I have a couple of introduction videos here, nothing more than 10 minutes though, and then boom, we're hitting it hard. We talk about what confidence is in our first section, and we really lay down the foundations. I kind of took a beginner to advanced approach on this, and the whole structure is you have to understand what confidence and self-esteem is first before we're able to really build any confidence and self-esteem. Um, so it wouldn't be very good for me to give you some strategies on confidence and self-esteem if you don't even know what it is yet. So we talk about this in a few uh, in, in depth, and then um, I do give some strategies right away. So students are working with 
how to build their confidence and self-esteem. Um, I give this example of uh, this action exercise. And I have an extra action exercise in almost every single uh, section of the course. And this is meant to, okay, now you understand what we've talked about in these previous videos. It's time to take action because that's the best way to learn is to, to actually do it. So I have these action exercises. And this one's great. The do you believe you have the right to exist one? And uh, I'll let everyone kind of ex explore that one for themselves, but it's very That's powerful. An interesting question. Yeah, um, it is a very interesting question when we start to think about it, and it's a really great way to start right away with the course. I then go into what your self-esteem is, um, so really break down what is self-esteem, um, and really do some great work here. And there's a book on self-esteem called The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem by Nathaniel Brandon. I talk about a few things in that book because that's like a cornerstone book for self-esteem. And I felt if I didn't bring that along into the course, then uh, this couldn't be the best course that it could be. So if you're really interested in self-esteem specifically, check out that book. It is amazing. Um, so I talk about a few things there. We then talk about our inner confidence mindsets. And I talk about, again, in order to show on the outside how confident we are, we first have to internalize these different beliefs and internalize on the inside these mindsets. So I have a bunch of different ones there. Uh, a lot of these are positive reinforcers, um, you know, how to stop making excuses for yourself, how to beat fear. Then I have another action exercise there. And then I have a quiz um, in almost every single section as well to really reinforce the learning. I think it's great to not only watch the videos, but then go back and have to take a little mini quiz and go, oh, did I really understand that? So I have that in almost every single one of the uh, sections as well. I love taking the quizzes. Yes. And I and love the fact that if I get the answer wrong, I can retake the quiz and get the answer right. <laughs> correct. And, I, and they're only, you know, there are only a few questions. You know, if you took a, a huge quiz that was, you know, 30 questions or 10 questions or something goofy like that for every section, it just becomes too overwhelming, and I feel a lot of students lose engagement. But two questions, it's like, okay, did I really get the two main points out of this section and what Joe is really trying to teach us? And uh, I think it's been really effective so far. The students have really enjoyed those. Um, then we go for uh, some more beliefs and values. This course is very comprehensive, so I'm going to kind of walk through a little bit more here. Um, and then we go right to outer confidence. So really then once we have everything taken care of on the inside, we can go right to the outside, start working on our smile, start working on, uh, you know, what, it, how to feel just in general when we're on the outside, um, vocal tonality and, uh, our looks, you know, people get really, really, um, focused on our looks like, Oh, Hey, like, you know, how do, uh, how do I look on the outside? Like so many people get stuck in, the fact that, oh, if I look a certain way, that that directly affects my confidence and self-esteem. And it does to an extent. But I, I, I talk about, you know, why your looks don't matter as much as you really think that they do. I talk about how eating healthy and exercising. I just kind of dabble on that a little bit. I could probably create a whole course on that. But um, it's very comprehensive. I really tried to not leave anything untouched here. Uh, some more body language secrets. Uh, I talked about that a little bit earlier. So putting all of this together... Um, how to be touchy and not be like obnoxious about it, handshakes, um, so many different things. So it really is a, a very big, awesome, comprehensive course. And then the last part is to start taking action and to get people out there taking action because if you don't take any action at all, then, uh, well, those, these videos aren't going to do a whole lot for you. Right. We then summarize the course and uh, then we have a whole bonus section here um, with videos that, I felt were good enough to add to the course, but didn't really make them the main curriculum here. So just wanted to uh, share that. And that's kind of uh, what the course is, is like. Um, I was saying beforehand, I'll scroll all the way back up to the top. It's six hours in video. So uh, there's more than enough video here that I think is enough to where everyone who takes this course is going to become a master at their confidence and self-esteem if they start internalizing and using these strategies. Um, and then also too, um, it's not overwhelming to the part where it's like, Oh my gosh, it's like a 90 hour course. Am I really going to spend 90 hours? No, but if I take a half hour a day, 
It'll take me two weeks to get through this course. And I think not that that's going to take 10,000 hours. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's not going to be 10,000 hour course. Now, if you take these strategies and you work at them day in and day out for years and years, yeah, you can definitely reach the mastery level. And that's what this master class was kind of all about. And kind of my inspiration for it was to give you a really good base to where, yes, if you would just keep working at it over and over and over again, uh, you're really going to touch everything that you need to when building your confidence and self-esteem. Excellent. The Complete Confidence and Self-Esteem Masterclass course. Joe Paris, 2,000 students. It's got some ratings. One of them is mine. <laughs> it's regularly $50 if you click uh, the link that we're going to have in the description or if you click the um, – uh, just a sec. If you click up here, uh, we have a nice little discounted link for you. And hopefully, it'll always work. Yes, it, uh, it will definitely always work as long as a lot of students don't enroll in the course. I think there's like two or 300,000 coupons available. So uh, if that happens, if 200,000 of you <laughs> enroll with that coupon, um, I might just, just contact... Joe yeah. or myself, we'll get you yeah. in coupon. Yeah, exactly. Um, but no, there's more than enough to go around. And it's at the maximum discount that I can give you. I really truly believe in giving. And so, um, again, a, a way to do that is to discount it as high as I can currently, which is at the 50% mark. So you can enroll for $25. And uh, I feel that it's very reasonable. And you will gain much more out of the course than the $25 will, will really give you. So, um, yeah, definitely. And you, another bonus too is you can ask questions directly and I'm very interactive. I'm more than yes. willing to answer those questions with you and uh, help you through the journey and the course itself. So that in itself is worth more than the uh, $25 in my own personal opinion. But uh, yeah, we, you know, we'd love to uh, have you join us and we'll want to give you a special discount as well. Joe, thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to share all this information. And, uh, and you've gone beyond and above and beyond the call of duty. <clears throat> what I'd like to do is put you on the spot and ask you if you can leave us with one confident self-esteem slash self-esteem tip before we sign off. Yeah, one tip. And this is, you know, maybe not a life-changing, crazy, you know, never heard of this before. The biggest thing that I can tell people is to just take action. If you don't take action, you can't get any sort of result at all. You really have to just say, all right, you know what? I'm just going to do it. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm just going to go shake, you know, say hi to that person across the street. I'm just going to go to the, a, the different coffee shop to try a new situation. I'm just going to try it. I'm just going to take action. And from there, it's amazing. Our brains will start to learn and we'll start to figure out how to adapt to these different situations. But if there's anything I can really leave people with is stop listening to this podcast. <laughs> I know you've had a good time, but get out there and take action because that's what's going to help you really build your confidence and self-esteem. Cool. And I would add to that, that take the course and then <clears throat> go out, <clears throat> set a goal, go out and so set the goal depends on you. If you're going to set a goal and you're worried that you're not going to actually even take a step towards achieving that goal, there's a Q&A in the course, say, and, and Joe has his goal there. I have my goal there. Put your goal in and say, you know, by some date, this is what I want to do. And then we'll hold you accountable, which means we'll just ask you at the date, did you do it or not do it? And that sometimes will give you the impetus to actually go and do it. it if you don't need it, then still set the goal, put the goal in the course. And then when you achieve the goal, say, make a comment there. Hey, I achieved this goal. And how did you feel about it? And what you're going to find is, first of all, you're going to be inspiring the other students. And by putting it out there to us and to 2000 other students, it becomes more real. 